Hello, I'm Ed Palmet here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this three tiered herb garden or flower garden where I got the plants from AnnaWhite.com. You can go there and get the plants for free. I made a few changes and I made a few um, ways of making it a little faster and more durable. But this is it. Right here, you've got the three different tiers angle down, etc. It's made out of planks that you have for your fence. Usually you buy the planks in six foot sections. I have a six foot section over there, but this is just for, so I can hold it up easily and show. You get the planks at Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever, wherever you uh, want to buy your, your lumber at. I'd recommend getting the premium type of wooden planks for three quarter inch thick versus about a half inch for the cheaper ones. I think they're about six dollars each. You're going to need four six foot planks to get the garden finished. What you want to do, the first thing I would do is measure the planks width. Okay, not, not how thick they are, but how wide they are. And you want to make sure that they're five and a half inches. Some of them start off at five and a half inches but they taper larger when they go down so what I would do is set your table saw for five and a half inches run them through so that it's five and a half inches from top to bottom and this will save you a lot of problems when you're trying to assemble them I've already cut the boards but I'm just going to show you how I do it so that yeah, you're familiar with it so you'd have a six foot plank uh, or picket here you set your fence at 16 inches and then you make your cut. You'd have one, slide it down. You'd make your other cut. You'd have two. Uh, yeah, put it over there. And then of course you have the rest of your board. And then what I like to do is I move my fence. I put, I put this next to the blade. I move my fence all the way so that it touches. It should be five and a half inches. But uh, in case it's off a little bit, if you did this, it'll make sure that the rest of your boards are the correct length. So I do that. I, I run through and get two sides. One, two, those are for the, uh, the, the ends. And then what I do is I move this back to 16. Make sure it's 16. I take the two that I cut because the thickness could vary from board to board. So you, you, you take the ones you just cut, put it against the fence, take the board that you're cutting, slide it against those two so that you get the thickness of those two, and then you run your last piece through. So imagine I ran it through, and that gives you the boards for your first, uh, first of the three baskets, or whatever you want to call them. So you're going to do this three times. I've already done that. So I've got, these are going to be for three. And then what you're going to do, once you've got these, uh, you can do this now or you can do it when the box is assembled, but you want to drill drainage holes in here. So you can do that with a, uh, uh, a drill press or just a regular drill. Probably half inch, not half inch, I would say a quarter inch holes through that. And then that's all you need for the three baskets or three boxes and then what you're going to do is you're going to take another board you're going to move the fence to two inches and you're going to run this through twice that's going to give you two sections of two inches and it's going to leave one section of one and a half inches and you can use that see like this would be one and a half inches you can use that for other projects you can even use them for other gardens like this you would what you would do is you would just take all the leftovers and use instead of instead of two inches and two inches and two inches it'll just be one and a half one and a half and one and a half i've made plenty of those so you don't waste any wood up to you just i find the two inches uh seem to be a little more sturdy they look a little more robust so once you run through you're going to have you basically Two, two six foot by two inch sections of this for the legs. 
So then you just move your fence back and now you're going to change it to 24 inches and you're going to cut two, 24 by two inches. Then you put those aside and then next you're going to run some at, I haven't cut these yet, but these are cut for the diagonal at 28 and a half inches. So you're going to get two at 28 and a half, two at 24 inches, and then you're going to have one at 16 for the kind of stabilizing brace. And then you're going to cut the angle on a miter, miter saw, however you want to cut it, it doesn't matter, at a 30 degree angle, you're going to get that angle like that. So then after the, those cuts, you're going to have, I'll just say it again, two at 24, two at 28 and a half, and then one at 16 inches. And that's all you need for the boards. Then you're going to start assembling and I will show you how to assemble next. Safety first. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I assemble these. What I use is a nailer, so an air nailer, this bostage, and then I use um, one and a half inch 18 gauge brad nailers. How I start off is you want to get the two sides and the bottom. And what I usually do is I usually mark just a light mark where they are. That way I know where I'm gonna put the put the wood or put the uh, wood glue. Oh, so wood glue I use type on three. It's for outside. Uh, it seems to work well for me. So however you want to put it on there. Just put it on a little bit. Brush it on. Let's see how long it takes me to do this. And then Now, a trick I learned on one of the Facebook groups, say I were to shoot this down and it would stick out, okay, that which happens a lot, and then I would clip them and I would keep trying. If, it, if you shoot the nail down and it pops out the other end, just turn it 90 degrees and that should take care of it, because what it's doing, it's hitting the grain of the wood and shooting it out in the angle. So that's a trick I, that's really helpful. I didn't know before someone posted that. So here's the other side. Okay. And then you're going to turn it on, on the side, throw some glue on here. Brush it in. And sometimes I clamp them down and get a good good grip. Sometimes I don't. Just I guess it depends on how everything's fitting together right there. So you got the glue there. You just kind of look whatever whatever side looks looks the best that you like. And center it. And you see how they match up pretty good? That's why you want to make sure when you're cutting the long boards, make sure that they're five and a half inch width all the way from top to bottom. Uh, I've learned that if you don't, you don't realize that they look the same, but if you didn't measure, assembling it just does not, it just, it just doesn't look right. So, uh, you want to see? Also, another trick is if you tilt your gun a little bit, see, I don't know if you can see, it. I tilted it too far down and left the mark. You tilt it a little bit up, it's less, you don't get that mark. Okay. Just make sure one's popping in on that side. 
You don't see any popping out of the bottom, so we're good. Also, something to note. You want to leave a little gap up at the top from where you put the nail. The reason being, is sometime, sometimes the nail and the glue doesn't stick forever because you're going to put soil in here and you're going to water it and it gets wet and what will happen is this will separate over time. Okay, it'll separate. I've tried using uh, nails, staples, whatever, but nothing seems to uh, prevent it 100% of the time. So if you leave a little bit here, what you can do is you can countersink, and I'll show you how I do that. Just countersink a hole right here, use some deck screws, and then that'll just go in there and make the uh, uh, connection. It'll make the joint there, or whatever you want to call it, so that it won't separate over time. So again, you want to leave just a little gap right at the top. So I got that side, and I'm going to glue it down. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to fast forward the video after I make the first one, because it'll probably get boring seeing me do this again and again. But just want to make sure which one looks the best. Goes right here. Square it up nice and pretty. Leave a little gap at the top. There's one. So you need three of those per garden set. So when I cut them, I just cut them and I stack them. I make sure all the wood stays together. And then uh, we're good to go. And you know what? I just remembered I have, I forgot to uh, drill the holes. But I can come back and I can just hand drill the holes later. So that's not a problem. Let me just finish these up. So you know where the glue goes. Put these two together. Sometimes if you let the glue sit a few minutes, it gets tacky, and then that oh, it doesn't wiggle around as much. But today's a good day; it's not really wiggling around. Like right here, we just start moving on it. But yeah, that's good. One thing you need to be aware of, see there's a knot right here. Don't shoot a nail through the knot because it won't end well. It'll, it'll split the piece of wood, the nail will bend. So just kind of go a little bit around. It is handy to keep a rag in case you put too much glue on there or the glue gets away from you. You wipe it down. There you go. Remember, leave a little gap at the top. Skip the, the knot.
sure it looks pretty. Let's see. Let's see. Two boxes, see? Just assembly line it, you're good to go. The next set. Make sure it matches up. Put the glue on. And usually I have a headset on or I've got a little speaker listening to something podcast or actually it's more likely it's audiobooks and so as the time go by more pleasant I, I quote unquote read more books that way Gap at the top. Okay, now that we have our boxes assembled and off camera I drilled the drainage holes. I don't even think you really need them, but they're there just in case. I guess it helps with some airflow with the soil or whatnot. I've never really seen water drip out through there, but that's easy to do and, and it's not bad to have. So, um, this one here, because sometimes the wood bows it just doesn't line up right so what I did is I dropped some glue down here and I got some clamps in there to, to kind of pull it together so that can dry we don't need this one just yet what we're going to do next is attach the legs as you see also off camera I countersunk some holes and then put some uh, deck screws in there one of the quarter inch deck screws in there because like, like I was saying, these um, nails, the brad, the brad nails, they're good to hold it together, but over time it will split even though we glued them and stapled them. The top part just seems to always, always drift apart. So let's move this stuff out of the way. Move this one out of the way over here. And next you're gonna get your 24 inch by 2 inch leg uh, legs so what I like to do is just take one side kind of line it up and same thing I'll put the a mark there so I know where the glue goes I put the glue on Okay, so put the glue on. And I usually put the glue on both because this gets 
Let it get sticky. Center that up. And then I do what, eight? Eight of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that should be good. And then flip it over. And the same thing. Measure. Put the glue on. This on, and we're good to go. Okay, now that we got the two back legs on, we're going to do the two front legs. The two front legs go at an angle. I think in the instructions it says next to put these on, but I put those on last. I put it just because the uh, this may well I'll show you later. I'll do this next. So I take this, I line it up with the top of the first box, okay, and then make sure it's lined up. And then I mark it so that I know where I'm going to be putting the glue. So I mark the bottom, and then I just kind of mark the sides. Because I want to put glue here, and I'm going to put glue here, so that it adheres a lot better. So let's do that. this around and we'll let that cure up a little bit while we spread this one around all right so we got glue here and glue there let's move this out of the way this on there make sure it's angled right all right hold it in place and then I turn around the staples okay Okay, and then I just staple this in. And I'll go through, and I'll grab any extra glue that squeezed out. It's easy to do it now when it's wet because you're never going to be able to sand it. And got a bunch of glue in here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to do the other side a little different. All right, make sure space on the ground here. We're still going to do the same. We're going to have it equal to the top or even with the top. We're going to mark so that we know where to put the glue in on the box. And we're going to mark so we know where to put the glue in on the leg. And we're only going to put in one staple on this one so that it can pivot. 
it'll hold it in place, but it'll pivot. So when we put it on the ground, we can make sure it pivots so that it's equal and balanced with the other leg. If you just go ahead and attach it, it'll be off just by a little bit. It always happens. And then it's a, you gotta pop all everything off, remove the nails to try to get it straight. So that's a little lesson I've learned over making these for a while. Let's get this on there so it starts to cure up a little bit. You want you definitely want to do this because it's gonna make it tacky, but it's not gonna just uh, move around as much. You want it to hold it a little bit. Let's see here. All right. Remember, you just want to put it even with the top board. It's real slippery. Let it sit up just a minute. It's tacky. It won't move around. All right. And you want to put one at the top because you want it to be able to pivot. I'll show you why. It's still moving around. Just give it a second. Something to do. Let it sit up, or set up a little bit. All right, one here. Okay, let's set up just now a minute or two. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna find a spot on the ground to put it in. Put it on. Okay, and here I'll show you what I'm talking about. So grab this when you lift it up, because this will just flop all around. So grab that, set it on the ground. Let's see if I can show you. Let's see. Set it on the ground and push. This is the one with just the one. But you want to make sure that it's even, because it will move, but you want to make sure it's even at the bottom so that that way it's set up so it looks like it's even let me set this back up okay it's even now you can put the rest of your nails in it and finish up on top there we go all right so now there, you've got the one all set up. The next step is going to be putting the other ones up, or other ones on. The best way to do it is upside down. And I have a little spacer that I put in there. Let me go grab those two spacers. scrap wood because otherwise if you do it by if you just do it by eye I'm telling you one, one of these will be you try to put these in they want to be a little high it, it just won't be right so you definitely want to get some kind of spacers so the spacers I have let's see it's been a while okay these are about two and a quarter inch spacers but it doesn't matter two inch spacers, three inch spacers, whatever space you want between there so that so that it's the same all the way around, okay? So, and I put it like this because it'll start getting it'll start getting top heavy and it'll, it'll want to fall over so I put, I made this little jig. You can put glue on, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but this, with enough nails it should be okay, or staples it should be okay. So now you want to what I do is I look down so that I can see the end of the last box. All right. And then even. And then it's even. And then if they're even, if these board, two boards are the same, the two spacers are the same, you just push down all the way on them. Make sure that this is all the way down on this one, and then, and then it will be even. Okay. Oh, see? Glue from the wiggle. I'm going to get rid of all that glue. And if you're going to paint them or stain them, what you want to do is uh, 
get rid of all the glue so we have a, um, a wet washcloth ready and wipe all that, otherwise it won't stick. You have to sand the glue out. Okay. So let's just make sure that's even. Just kind of eyeball it even. And is that in the way? Yeah, that one was in the way. Okay. Make sure it's even. Make sure this one, the back of this is where the front of that one is. So let's hit it with a couple. Now it won't move and you want to make sure the other side. The reason you don't put all this, the nails in in case it's not exactly lined up right. Let's do that. Okay. Make sure that's like that, that's like that. Okay. Easy, so you can just evenly distribute these, flip it around. Okay, so that one, that one is done. Then you gotta kind of twist this to get these out. Well, I think I know the other reason why I didn't put that backboard in, and the back, this back brace in. It's because then you can't really, I think it locks this in. That doesn't matter. I always put that in like that. Okay. So it's top heavy. It's okay. When you get these, these should, the glue should be dried on these. Pick up and then just kind of repeat the process. Push that one in. Push. You know what? Yeah. And then we take this one. Same thing, slide it through. And then. this in and you want to make sure that the back of this one is flush with the front of this one. So you kind of eyeball it from the side. That's good. And then you want to make sure that your spacers are flat and then you want to make sure that this is flat. What I try to do is I try to keep the nails so that it goes in to this board, then you'll never see them. Sometimes, depending on the thickness of, of the wood, the nails will pop out here. Okay? Um, so if you can keep them lined up with this board, you won't ever see the nails. But there we go, that should be good. Wiggle these out. Flip this over. All right. We're almost done. Now we just need the, the back brace here because this is kind of not flimsy, but you just drop. And you want to go six inches from the bottom up. And I made a couple of spacers for that. I made six inch spacers. It just helps put these on. So you put this here, this here, and really. So you know you're getting the staples in right. Kind of just make a nice quick line. So you know I, I need to go above that. Otherwise, you, you miss sometimes. I've done it a little bit. A little line there, a little line there. Put that in. And if you did your measurements right, this is 16 inches, just like this. Put this in. Sometimes I put glue here, sometimes I don't. It just depends. This one's 
pretty sturdy. I don't know that I need glue. So you just put it in there, make sure it's sturdy. Okay, find the mark. You just go up just a little bit. One, and two. And it pop through. I can move that, so we're good. Same thing on this side. And there it is, probably took from start to finish maybe an hour. You don't really need these extra spacers, but I'm telling you, they, they help. I mean, you see how much easier it is. Otherwise, it just won't line up right, and you're just gonna scrap wood. Um, you don't really need a fancy table saw. I've used different table saws. You could use a circular saw. You could use a jigsaw. I mean, it won't be as accurate, but you can do that. They don't have to be perfect. Uh, let's see what else. You want some kind of some kind of jig to make things right. The fir very first set I made, this was all messed up. I, I just eyeballed it, it didn't look right. So we got these, I added in. This is something that isn't in the plans, but like I said repeatedly, th these will pop out. It'll, it'll expand and it'll pop out. Once you got these in there, you're fine. Just on the top. The bottoms never seem to be a problem. It's just the top seem to expand. Um, that's it, so you're thinking, Let's see, each board, each um, picket is a, right now going to think about six bucks a piece. We used, <coughs> I'm just going to use four pickets, so roughly 25 bucks in materials. I usually sell these for about 55 bucks. Anyway, um, finished, finished product. I usually, you got about $24 in materials. I sell these for about uh, $55. Um, they're really nice. They hold up really well. Everyone really likes them. I, I mean, I, I like them. And I got the original plants from uh, AnnaWhite.com. I'm not affiliated with her at all, but since I got the plants from her, I might as well let you know where you can get the plants. And that's it. Thanks.